Anybody that owns the iPhone 13 Pro Max is going to tell you three things. Number one, the battery life is fantastic. Number two, the cameras are great. And number three, the phone is heavy. There's a fourth one. Before I bought this smartphone, I was told I would get girls. Maybe I don't know how to use this smartphone or maybe mine is broken, but that's not happening. Anyways, in this video, I'm going to share with you what it has been like using this smartphone for about six months. And as you can see, it hasn't been all roses. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Now, hands down, the iPhone 13 Pro Max is the best smartphone I have ever owned and it's also the most expensive smartphone I have ever bought. In my country, there are no contracts and you have to buy this smartphone at the full retail price and since Apple doesn't include a charger and a screen protector in the box, you would even have to spend more. Now, let's talk about the build quality and it's actually good. It has ceramic shield glass tech at the front. Apple claims that the front glass is tougher than any other smartphone out there, which is true because ceramic glass is made by Con the same company that makes Gorilla Glass. So your Android smartphone with Corning Gorilla Glass Victors isn't as strong as the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Sorry Android fans, in your face! <laughs> <laughs> the iPhone screen might be tough, but it scratches easily. So if you're planning on using the iPhone 13 or any other Apple smartphone, get a screen protector and a case. That way, when it's time to sell or trade in your iPhone, you'll get a good deal. Moving to the sides, the iPhone 13 Pro Max sides are made from stainless steel and the rear is made from glass. It's important to note that the glass at the rear isn't as strong as the front, so that's another reason why you must use a case. For the weight, the iPhone 13 Pro Max is is heavy. Easily the heaviest smartphone I have ever used and also the heaviest iPhone Apple has made. It weighs in at 249 grams and the heft is something I still struggle with till this day. The edges are flat and sometimes they are sharp. It can get really uncomfortable but with the right case, that's not a problem. For the IP rating, the iPhone 13 Pro Max is an IP68 dust and water resistant smartphone. It's resistant to up to 6 meters for 30 minutes. You can dip the smartphone in water but please do not go swimming with it. For the external features, the iPhone 13 Pro Max has a ring slash silent switch which is a quick way to turn off sound and notifications. The volume buttons and SIM card tray are on the right side. At the top, there's nothing. On the right side is where the side button and the 5G antenna are located. Now moving to the bottom, it has two microphones, a lightning connector port and a speaker. This smartphone has two speakers. The other speaker is located at the ear slit and for the sound quality, it's really good. And I would even say it has the best speakers on any smartphone except for those Chinese smartphones. Nothing can beat those ones. At the rear, it has three cameras, a LiDAR scanner and an LED flashlight. At the front, inside the reduced notch, the second speaker, a mic, a 12 megapixel selfie camera and a bunch of other sensors reside there. For the face unlock feature, it has been accurate and fast but my issue with it is it doesn't work when the smartphone is sideways. Android smartphones, on the other hand, work when the smartphone is upside down, sideways. It works in all angles. I know it's less secured but I'm just trying to unlock and use my smartphone and it's not like it has the nuclear missile launch code on it. So. <laughs> For the display, the iPhone 13 Pro Max has a 6.7 inch Super Retina XDR display with ProMotion. It's an OLED panel with a variable refresh rate. It can go as low as 10 Hz and all the way to 120 Hz and that's one of the reasons why the battery life on the iPhone 13 Pro Max is damn good. The display has a resolution of 1284 by 2887 pixels and it's one of the best displays out there. The colors are accurate, it supports HDR content, using it to consume media is actually good and for the notch you would think it will interfere when you're watching content but I promise you it disappears away and you wouldn't even notice it. The display can get really bright, it isn't as bright as the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra and it shouldn't be because the goal isn't to get blinded by the display of your smartphone. It's bright enough to use under direct sunlight. So that's a win. For one hand use, it isn't convenient although there are ways to make it work. In that situation, the iPhone 13 Pro or the regular iPhone 13 would be the smartphone to go for. Now moving to another reason why I bought the iPhone 13 Pro Max and that's the performance you get out of this smartphone. The A15 Bionic chip, which is a 5 nanometer processor, breathes through anything you throw at it like it's nothing. Video editing and rendering, check. Playing graphic intensive games, check. Taking awesome videos and pictures, check. 
when it comes to playing PUBG, it ran the game at HD graphics and extreme frame rate and the gameplay was butter smooth, the 6.7 inch display and the stereo speakers makes gaming a pleasure on the smartphone. For Call of Duty, it ran the game at very high graphics and maximum frame rate. As expected, the gameplay was flawless. Moving to Genshin Impact, which is one of the most demanding games on mobile, the iPhone 13 Pro Max played the game on the highest graphics settings and even at 120 frames per second, but after a couple of minutes, it slowed down and the frames were dropping. I found that leaving the graphics settings at medium and increasing the frame per second to 60 made the game run smooth without dropping frames or overheating. True multitasking isn't something that exists on the iPhone and I can see smiles on the faces of Android users. Wipe that smile off your face. The iPhone 13 Pro Max comes with 6GB of RAM and although it can remember all the apps you've ever opened, you can split screen with it without jailbreaking your smartphone and it can't render a video in the background. Well, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It can't do other things but I'm not going to mention that in this video. I don't want the Android fanboys to laugh and have a field day in the comment section of this video. For resuming apps where you left up, it does an okay job with it but if you want true multitasking, if you want to be able to split screen, the iPhone isn't for you. But can you live without those features? The answer is absolutely yes. But sometimes I find myself looking at Android users and getting jealous and just wishing we could do that on the iPhone. Now, one area where the iPhone is king and that's with the Apple ecosystem. It's something Android users can't wrap their heads around and really, I can't blame them. Now, here's what I mean. You can be browsing a website on your iPhone and continue where you stopped on your MacBook with one click. Same goes for YouTube videos and same goes for some applications. Another example is with AirDrop, you can send documents, pictures, videos, website, map location to any Apple devices and it's fast. With AirPlay, you can share, play or even present content from your iPhone to your Mac. With Instant Hotspot, I can share my iPhone mobile data with my Mac without touching my phone. Universal Clipboard allows me to copy anything on my laptop and paste it on my iPhone and vice versa. Using the iPhone alone can be boring but when you get into the Apple ecosystem, it's going to be hard to use an Android smartphone as your main smartphone. The Android smartphone is definitely going to be your side check. Moving to the cameras, the front camera has a 12 megapixel sensor and it takes really good pictures. Portrait shots looks amazing. The skin tone it produces looks great. The way the iPhone processes its pictures would make you think you're the best photographer alive because it's really easy to take good looking pictures with it. For the rear camera, the iPhone 13 Pro Max comes with a 12 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel telephoto camera and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. The pictures captured by the iPhone is simply impressive and it's going to make you bring out your smartphone more often to take pictures. Creating videos is where the iPhone 13 Pro Max really shines. It has the cinematic video mode which is cool but I honestly don't use it. It. The iPhone 13 Pro Max has the ability to record in ProRes which gives you the best quality but 1 minute of footage takes up to 1.7 GB of storage. Recording videos in 4K 30 frames per second is what I usually do and the video quality has been more than sufficient for me. Now moving to the battery department, I have to say that the iPhone 13 Pro Max has been amazing. I always charge a smartphone once a day and I get around 10 hours screen on time. I did a battery drain test where I compared the battery of the iPhone 13 Pro that comes with a 3 mAh battery with an Android smartphone that has a 6000 mAh battery and the iPhone 13 Pro almost won. Imagine what the iPhone 13 Pro Max with the bigger 4352 mAh battery will do. Overall, I am super super impressed with the battery life of this smartphone. The charging time on the other hand isn't bad. An hour of charging takes the battery level to 80% and because Apple wants to preserve the battery health of their smartphones, the charging slows down to 5 watts and it takes around 1 hour 40 minutes to get to 100%. So what I do is I charge up my smartphone to 80% and go about my day and to be honest, the phone hasn't died on me. So everything I have said about the iPhone 13 Pro Max has mostly been positive except for the size of the smartphone, the weight, god it's heavy and also the lack of multitasking, true multitasking. Also when I got this smartphone, I experienced a lot of drop calls, people were not able to reach me when I'm connected to Wi-Fi but luckily, a software update has fixed that issue, thank god. So for the million dollar question, should you buy the iPhone 13 Pro Max right now? Well, I would say no because the iPhone 14 is just around the corner and that's the one you should save for or sell your kidney for. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But if you can't wait and you want a portable, easy to carry around smartphone, then I'll recommend you go for the iPhone 13 or the iPhone 13 Pro. 
As for the iPhone 13 Pro Max, well, I'm not enjoying the weight. Sometimes I just leave it on the table and not use it unless I have to. The weight isn't that bad, but for someone that uses their smartphone all the time, it bothers me and I might just go back to the iPhone 13 Pro. So that's my long-term review of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys very soon. Valor Reviews, signing out.